Hello and welcome back or welcome to my reaction of Candy Necklace this time from the Did You Know That There's a Tunnel Under Ocean Boulevard album by Lana Del Rey. Um, if you've been following then you'll know that I have reacted to all the songs previous to this as well and this video will also be part of a playlist where I'm reacting to each song individually um, in individual videos and put into a playlist so you can watch it all um, but they will be coming out and I won't you know if you're watching in real time not real time real time like right now because that doesn't make sense that'd be creepy uh, if you're watching on the window somewhere but anyway <laughs> um you know yeah playlist whatever I'm doing the songs individually feel like I've stated it enough um and yes in the description if you want to watch this uncut then you can I've got a patreon link that you can have, head over there and do that sorry trying to speak too fast because I want to get this bit out of the way um all other links in the description just check them out <laughs> and like comment subscribe if you enjoy this Right, okay, this is the last one I'm doing today. I'll probably do four more tomorrow. And then uh, the next day I'll probably do like uh, four more or whatever. And then I'll do two more. So I'm probably gonna be filming over like, yeah, four days or something. So each video, it'll come out, you know, I'm gonna start editing, get one out, one out tomorrow, you know, try and keep it moving like that. Obviously, if you're watching at a later date, none of this matters because you could just watch it all in one. But anyway, <laughs> let's actually get into it. I'm confusing myself by talking about this in each video at, the, <laughs> at this point. Okay, yeah, so this song is called Candy Necklace Feet John ba Baptiste. And yeah, let's go for it. Oh, need to put my bloody glasses on over and over again I keep forgetting I need to just keep them on all righty let's go The way she's really lazily delivering the lyrics. Kind of give me ultraviolence. It has a darker tone. You've been acting pretty restless, dancing like the young and restless. Candy necklaces. The way the piano follows the melody line of the vocal. I feel like candy necklaces is a like a metaphor for drug and cola. I'll say it in a minute. That felt like a marina reference. Oh, she sounds so good. Oh my gosh. It's like the young and reckless. I think that we should address this. All his candy necklaces. Mm. Oh my gosh, that is stunning. Like tickles my ears. John Baptiste. Oh, I love this for an outro. Let you sit with it. Of that like deeper tone and Lana's soft tone. Oh, it's like velvet and silk. Wow, that one is intense. 
really intense. Um, I might actually do the John Batiste interlude as well now. It's only, it, I say it's only three minutes 33, but that's a lot shorter than some of the songs. Yeah, I might do that. And because it's John Batiste again, I feel like, does it follow on in some way? Maybe I'll just do that, give that a quick listen right now, and then I'll talk about the songs. <laughs> Bit of a soundscape. I'm listening to this now because it does feel like it follows on from the last song. I feel like I have a good idea of what's going on but I'm going to go back to obviously Candy Necklace first, read into that and then go on to uh, the John Baptiste uh, interlude. So Lana says in verse one of Candy Necklace, white flower cinnamon on my teeth and of course that references cinnamon girl, cinnamon on my teeth but white flower is interesting because she's saying it like a flower not like powder you know like flower food um so innocence something there about innocence but then cinnamon on my teeth it's bittersweet right cinnamon is bittersweet i'll click it as well lana describes cinnamon as sweet where it in actuality has a spicy uh sweet taste there's lines in the song harken back to lyrics from lana's track cinnamon girl from the album norming f and rockwell where she says cinnamon in my teeth from your kiss you're touching me so yeah i guess like it's again about being a kiss and she's a white like i don't know what the white flower is meant to symbolize but i guess some sort of purity innocence something like that but then kissing this man is kind of like bittersweet there's something dangerous there there's something about him that might be a little bit toxic but it's all in fun as well because cinnamon isn't that bad right you know she says she's sitting in a stoplight in northern town i feel lucky i drive somewhere out of range i don't know where white noise coming out of my brain turns off for nothing i wonder what that means you know like white noise coming out my brain um you know she's basically blocking everything else out like this you know, it's coming out of her brain rather than it going in her ears. It's just all she's think she's not really thinking much. She's kind of an autopilot and just like this white noise, which to some people is actually quite calming. So maybe she's in a very uh, chill state. She also says, I feel lucky. You know what I mean? She's driving and it's just white noise. She's just cruising, no real direction, but it seems like a nice thing. She then says, turns off for nothing. Um, but I don't know what that means. Like, does that mean her Oh, maybe turn off like in the car, like turning off like a, the road for nothing, like just going to nowhere. You know, there's no reason for what I'm doing. Oh, the brain turning off, you know, and just relaxing. In the pre-chorus, she says, Rockefeller, my umbrella, God, I love you, baby. Storyteller, Us Forever is my favourite song. Okay, so Rockefeller uh, might be referencing John D. Rockefeller was an American business magnate and philanthropist. Rockefeller was born on 8, July 8th, 1839, into a large family in upstate New York. Like Rockefeller, Lana was raised in upstate New York. I'm still not entirely sure what that means, though. Like Rockefeller, my umbrella. Is she saying, like, you know, an umbrella is protective. It protects you from the rain. It protects you from the sun. It's a protective thing, right? So is she saying, like, Rockefeller protected her in some way? In, like, you know, a metaphoric way, maybe in her mind it helped her? So we're gonna go on a bit of a history lesson here. 
but um, I really wanted to understand the Rockefeller line and whereas I don't quite fully understand it yet there are bits here that I guess make me understand it a little bit more so it says here John Davison Rockefeller, the son of a travelling salesman, was born on July 8th, 1839 in Richford, New York. Industrious even as a boy, the future oil magnate earned money by raising turkeys, selling candy and doing jobs for neighbours. Um, I thought this was interesting because it says selling candy and of course this song is called Candy Necklace. Could that be a tie-in somehow? Um, so this whole part then goes on to say about all the charities that he ended up giving a lot of money to um, and when I looked into how much money it was a hell of a lot of money up in like the double digit millions like 50 million 70 million which is crazy to things like educational religious and scientific causes so he was quite the philanthropist so here it says Rockefeller was a Schumpeteran entrepreneur he clearly changed the stream of the allocation of resources over time by introducing new departures into the flow of economic life. By creating the modern oil industry, his emphasis on size and efficiency and the use of modern chemistry resulted in the development of a wide variety of new products that made the lives of ordinary people better as a consequence. He made light cheap for untold millions and his great creation was ready, willing and able to provide the cheap gasoline when it was needed, thus ushering in the age of automobile in America. So in a weird way, I feel like Lana is grateful for him just so that she could drive her car around and have white noise pouring out her head. And, you know, she's just grateful in that way, maybe to do of driving her car and Maybe just for being a philanthropist? I don't know. And last but not least, he set the standard for philanthropy. Just the eradication of hookworm in itself alone would merit his place as one of the great humanitarians of the 20th century. But his reputation was so sullied that he never received the credit that he was due for this great act on behalf of humankind. Um, so that's interesting too, because that goes back to Lana and her reputation and she's worried, maybe, as well, that, like, all the great things she does won't be looked at as great because her reputation has been quite sullied in the past. I don't know if she's trying to relate to him or if she just sees a part of herself in him or just looks up to him. I'm not entirely sure, but this was all the interesting information I could find that could possibly tie in to that lyric. Also, it seems like... Uh, People with great wealth are called Rockefellers in today's age. So she could just be referencing someone who's extremely rich. But I don't know why she would be. But I don't know. <laughs> Lana can be a little bit um, of a dark hall sometimes. We don't know all of it. We don't know what's going on in her mind. She kind of writes for herself. And we just got to figure it out. But she's like, God, I love you, baby. Storyteller, Us Forever, it's my favourite song. And like, so Storyteller or oh, Us Forever, I wonder if Us Forever is an actual name of a song, but it's got no quotation marks around it on Genius, but I don't know. I'm not sure. This one's definitely a bit more cryptic. Okay, now we get to the chorus. You've been acting pretty restless, dancing like the young and restless, and I'm obsessed with it candy necklaces you know you've been acting pretty restless like you can't like you know restless is like you can't rest you need to get up and be doing something dancing like the young and restless it is funny that she rhymes restless and restless together it, it almost feels like a mistake like I don't know why because young and reckless is actually the term that is used but she also says reckless uh next in the next few lines so it almost feels like a mistake and I don't know why and then I'm obsessed with it like, you know, she's obsessed with him being reckless and restless or whatever, obsessed with that. And then candy necklaces. And when I think of candy necklaces, I don't just think of the sweets, like the, you know, childhood sweets where you have a candy necklace. Mm -hmm. It makes me think of maybe a necklace with a vial of, you know, substances like Coke, basically. Um, and then she says that whole thing again, but uses reckless instead, which I mentioned. It's like she's saying... Oh, and she also says, I'm obsessed with this, all his candy necklaces, you know. Maybe she's obsessed with this guy when he's on, you know, 
drugs or something. Maybe she loves that. Like there's something about him that makes him fun and wild. And maybe she shouldn't love it, but she just is obsessed with it. At least she maybe shouldn't love it, but she's obsessed with it. Verse two, sitting on a sofa, feeling super sewer. Yeah, not good, basically. Um, you know, wanting to unalive herself. And like, when I said it reminded me of Marina that bit, it's because in her song, Teen Idol, she goes, feeling super, 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 you know. So it reminds me of that. Oh, and someone has actually said a reference to Marina's 2012 song, Teen Idol. I'm happy that someone else noticed that. And then she goes on to say, hate to say the word, but baby, hand on the Bible, I do feel like it's you, the one who's bringing me down. Thought we, uh, we were cool. We were kicking it like Tribe Called Quest. I'll, I'll click that. What's Tribe Called Quest? Oh, it's like a, oh, oh, I guess it's like kicking it, like kick it, kick it. Yes, you can. Is it that song? Yeah, it is that song. I thought it would be. Okay, and then she goes, you're the best, but baby, you've been bringing me down. I can see it now. So this is very more, this is a lot more obvious in this verse, just like, you know, I love you. And like, this has been fun and all, and we were kicking it and, and I, it was been great. But I, I started to see that maybe you're pretty toxic. That cinnamon kiss you've been giving me ain't all that sweet. Yeah, you've been bringing me down. And like, when she goes, you're the best, it reminds me of like, I say you're the best, I leaning for a big kiss. It kind of reminds me of like maybe going backwards a little bit rather than her last, you know, recent, you know, partnerships, uh, par boyfriends or whatever. It feels like maybe she's talking about the, the older days, the older days, the olden days. But you know what I mean? As stated be by Lana before, I just wanted you to know that baby you're the best. Ocean Boulevard seems to regurgitate many themes and lyric content of every Lana Del Rey era showcasing her range all on one album ballads trap orchestral choral lana covers new territory while exploring her past eras on her ninth studio album okay cool so yeah you're the best is definitely a re reference for sure um to an older time and then in the chorus pre-chorus this time she says the same thing like rock fella my umbrella god i love you baby but then she says fortune teller favorite ever that's the story of us and fortune teller that's interesting like telling the future of course and then she's like, you're maybe she's describing this person or oh no, she's describing a story of them. Like we could see the future, but it's but you're also my favourite. I don't know. It's all like they're really just words put together and it it, it it lacks context, but I still think it's really cool. Um, because you don't have to have everything doesn't have to have deep context. It's just for you to sing or think about on your own. But yeah, fortune teller about knowing the future somehow and saying that's the story of us. Hmm. And then it goes on to, yes, the chorus. There's a beautiful piano solo. And then again, yeah, it goes on to say candy necklaces, candy necklaces, and over and over and over again, which just sounds really good. Okay, okay, cool. I really, really loved that one, by the way. There's something about it that was just like, I don't know, like just deep and dark and sad. In I don't know, just interesting. Oh, interesting. Cooking this um candy necklaces maybe isn't exactly what i was thinking about but it says well maybe it, you know i don't know it could be but it says here this term refers to a necklace that is used to attract predators i don't think anyone wants to be attracting them right <laughs> anyway the symbology that this metaphor evokes is is that she is being attracted by the attributes the dance the neck is a very erogenous zone, but at the same time vulnerable. The emotions that the necklace can cause when being devoured can oscillate between danger and desire, as described throughout the song. He can show his vulnerability by acting freely with a jovial attitude, which only seems enticing to the narrator. It is also well known that there are candy lingerie, which can be a sexual innuendo of carnal desire between the narrator, in this case, Lana, and the one who wears the necklace. Interesting. Why is that a necklace that like attracts predators? I don't get it. Why would you want to attract one? Or it just does? That, I, I'm so confused by that. I've never heard of that. I'm gonna look it up. I don't know. I think that's just a strange take if i'm honest and not not to be rude at all like because actually some of that makes a lot of sense in the, in, a, in the sexual way but um i guess it could be like candy necklaces shows his maturity something immature about him something fun loving about him if it's to do with a real candy necklace you know maybe it's just like his playfulness but you know it 
acting really playful and crazy and reckless and restless all the time is going to bring you down because you need dynamic in a person. There needs to be balance. Um, but I'm still going to stick with my um, drug theory as well because um, it really could be both. But anyway, let's move on to the next one where uh, John Baptiste interlude. Because again, I did think at first that this was like... Uh, that he'd taken a substance because he's there going, oh, I feel something right now. I feel it, I feel it, I feel it early. You know, being like, oh, it's happening before, you know, the time. Time is timed to time, time, time. Sorry. <laughs> Sometimes I just can't speak, <laughs> honestly. But I'm feeling it too early because the, the substance shouldn't or doesn't usually hit that quick. And he goes, I feel it late. I feel it early. I feel all of it. And, you know, at first I thought it was about that, but then as it went on, as we got down the song, it was more like, no, I think he's just talking about the music, the music that is literally playing. He's been like, oh yeah, this feels great. This makes sense. It felt more like he's been like, I feel it in my soul, the music. And it's funny because I guess in some cases, music is a drug, but a, a drug that doesn't hurt you. It's a beautiful drug. Um, one where it's like, it, it it's just, wonderful yeah it's just wonderful um so maybe it was more about him being like yes i feel it i feel it early in the morning i feel this great amazingness in the music that has been played right now this works i love it so much or something like that so maybe it's more about music than it is about something dark like substances or it doesn't always have to be dark but you know what i mean um i don't know it's so gorgeous so gorgeous and also um it could also be something like feeling the power of God as she's been getting quite religious on this album. Like it could be like feeling, yeah, heaven, feeling the power of God, feeling the love, feeling happiness, feeling, you know, the things that have been said on the album, like they are feeling it in that moment and it's amazing. Um, so yeah, wicked. Okay. And the next song, obviously I'll be doing it in another video, but that's going to be Kintsugi. I've got so many to go actually. I've got we've got Kintsugi, Fingertips, Paris, Texas, Grandfather, Please Stand on. Oh my god, how am I gonna put that as a title in my video? Grandfather, please stand on the shoulders of my father while he's deep sea fishing. <laughs> so annoying. I mean it's great, but it's annoying for making videos. Then it's the let the light in. Then there's Margaret, Fishtail, Peppers, Taco Truck. Oh my God, it's like, it's so much of it is definitely super religious though. And I don't feel like we've had, yeah, we've had religious themes from Lana before, but this one it is like a real kind of religious feel to it. Like it really feels thematically like that. Mixed with many like darknesses and stuff about love and whatever. Anyway, I'll get into all of that at the end, but yeah. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed and I shall see you in the next one. Bye.